Greetings, goons, gangsters, and gamers. It's your boy, The Good Tonight, today live in 4K. Live as in previously recorded, of course. So, new camera, no more of this relic, so we're going to have sufficiently more definition and hopefully better audio given this uh, insanely fancy device we got here. So, without further ado, bleh, without further ado, we will be taking a look at the fighting load carrier, what the army calls the flick, and what was generally referred to in the Marine Corps, because around the time it came out, the, uh, we just call it like the load, LBV load bearing vest 2.0. Though it does say fighting load carrier, so that's what we're going to be calling this one's in comedy brown because it is uh, Marine Corps Edition 1, and um, they do make M81 and uh, really, really ugly, what is it, the ACU, whatever, Army Universal, UCP, that's it, that nightmare, UCP is the most popular one. But they are fantastic for several reasons, and we're going to be talking about that. Now, When they're only fantastic when you're not enlisted. Which is to say, when you are enlisted, they like to um, do really, really dumb things. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah, so if you use this while you're enlisted, generally the only thing you're going to do, ever, is slap two canteen pouches, bam bam, right over the kidneys, and you're going to stand in change of command ceremonies. And other than that, you'll practically never see this guy ever again. <laughs> that was it. But um, it's a shame, really, because um, when you're not enlisted, I like when I had this when I was enlisted. It only the only thought was, uh, was a change of command ceremonies. You don't actually look at all the cool, integral things it can do, what it was designed to do, because the whole time you're just standing at parade rest over and over for hours on end, and a few guys lock out their knees. And... So when you are using it for actual like cool guy stuff. There's actually a lot of interesting things. So, right off the bat, what I want to talk about is, if you're in the States, I think they said the cheapest you can get one of these is like $40, $50. But if you're like already in a place that's got a lot of military surplus because of all the bases, I picked this guy up for about $11. So right off the bat, dirt cheap. And they're easy to find in good condition. This guy is in actually pretty fantastic condition. 12 bucks. And, uh, yeah, there's a few things we're going to be talking about. So, rough, so other than that, $12, dirt cheap. So if you need any form of gear and you've got, like, 20 bucks to your name, bam, you can already get it relatively cheap. You can just throw on your standard magazine pouches here and you've got a decent fighting load. Maybe throw on an IFAC back here. And, uh, yeah, throw a radio pouch up here on the left side and you're all set. That's really it. You take your little radio and set him up. You got more than enough spaces to mount all sorts of uh, comms and PTTs and whatnot, run some wires. It feels really, it's actually pretty comfy, which is crazy because this is like, was it the um, Rainbow Six Siege? Had they just the uh, reservist guys? This is like all they had, and it actually can do quite a bit. And of course, you got your grenade pouches in case you need to be like, whoa, grenade be upon you, and all that stuff, so. The grenade pouches come out pretty high, and you can, um... And the fact that you're... Well, it's not armor, but because it's not armor, that actually means it's actually sufficiently easier to take your rifle and get that guy's shoulder. Now you have no plate carrier interference and none of that nonsense. So, another bonus. So... Oh no, don't fall over. Do not fall over. Alright, so... Cheap, easy to wear, comfortable, takes a little bit of time to adjust. As you can see, there's this crazy system of straps and buckles and everything. We'll be talking about that later. For the most part, the back is relatively slick, which is good if you're going to be carrying a pack. But for the most part, very simple. You can just throw a camel back over this, and you are more or less good to go. Throw in, you got your mags, any grenades, um, admin pouches. Um, actually, yeah, we're gonna, so, let's, so let's get to that part. Like I said, when you're enlisted, all you're going to do is regulation, dumb regulation, is have all the buckles buckled and all the zippers zipped. Now, why is that silly? Well, as you know, with the old low-bearing vest, all you would do is you didn't have a zipper. You just had, a, like, two buckles. And, all the, and lo and behold, those two buckles have been replicated here. You can have the zipper open. You can actually... There's a pretty generous amount of uh, material to work with. 
Yeah, these guys adjust in through here, tuck in the extra, and you can set that up the way you, it's comfy. And what this basically does is by opening the space. I used to think the uh, split chest sort of idea was silly, but after running it for a bit, particularly with the... Uh, and I've filmed it so long, I'm all, all lost. The LB... Is it the, yeah, the LBT split front chest rig. And the, uh, I know Eagle had their own one as well. When you set it up like this, when you got to go prone, if it's zipped up, your magazines are in the way. Well, in the way. They keep you farther from the ground than you would want to be if you're under fire. But if you undo the zipper and you loosen up these guys, you can kind of like push them to the side, which gives you more room to get your chest up on the ground. Well, down on the ground. And your magazines are still accessible off to the side and everything still sort of stays together. And even more so, you can unclip it entirely and get as close to the ground as physically possible, which is pretty nifty. So it's um, stuff you don't get to do when you're uh, just a basic enlisted guy. You don't get to do any of that cool stuff. But yeah, so that is pretty cool. Additionally, with these guys open, you can unbuckle these. And much like pretty much every chest rig in existence, no, not all of them, but the good ones, you can pop this open and voila, you've got a whole slot for maps and that sort of ordeal. It's all meshed up, it's comfy, does the job. And over here, same idea, another pocket, other maps, other documents, things you need, all just held together with one little piece of Velcro. So let's get, let's keep on moving on, keep on keeping on around to the back so this is where things get a little interesting here I'm actually gonna buckle this guy up so he doesn't go flying all around while we're doing this Wheel. oh no that's, uh, that's rotated twisted uh, maybe just the zipper yeah we'll make it work anyway so on the back here you've got these little tabs and this guy right here and this guy basically connects to the um, to this little it's, a, it's in several pieces, basically, if you think about it that way. You got your two, your front, left and right side. You got this back part with the belt. So the back part with the belt can be adjusted. That's what this belt system connects into. And that all runs in through... Now you can't really see it. It all runs in through here, basically. It's a whole freaking molly... This is basically just a big old belt. If you take everything off, it's just a belt. And this basically is going to help you determine how uh, big the waist is. So you can adjust these, move them closer, move them out farther out. If you're a fat guy, skinny guy, normal guy, whatever you got. But you kind of kind of cut off at these part, these buckles here. So the buckles are designed. These actually do a really good job. They go from the left and right sides here. They loop up through here. This could just be like a standard loop, but they decided to do the whole shebang. And then you adjust that down through here. Here's the final one. Then all your extra material goes through here. Generally taped down and then... There's elastic for it, but as you can see, the elastic does not hold up with age. So, as always, use electrical tape, tape your stuff down. Now this buckle is a little dirty, that's probably what was 12 bucks. Oh no! And yeah, fully functional system. So this is actually one of the most recommended plate carriers if you're either, er, not plate carriers, chest rigs. If you're just getting started and you don't really know where to start, this is a pretty solid choice. And of course, You've got your classic U.S. right here. So, uh, you know, people don't think you're like from some other country or something crazy. I'm gonna tuck these guys back in real quick. These are just like to jam up on the tops back here. If I'm gonna use them at all, otherwise they get tucked away as well. You too, come here, use. $11. <laughs> I know I said it, but these things are pretty fantastic. But yeah, it's 11, like $11, $20. They're relatively inexpensive, and they do pretty cool stuff. So really, if you don't know where to start, and you want to start somewhere, then uh, yeah, this, 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 this is it. You pick this up. I know the uh, mag pouches, particularly the um, these Marine Corps ones I got on here are relatively are super cheap and you just throw on a knife act, a radio and you're good to go and of course with all chest rigs you can do the super cool thing when it gets dark throw on your 
bump helmet, and you're good to go. That's it. So um, yeah, if you're doing chest rigs, we could do a whole debate on uh, chest rigs and everything later, but for the most part, I mean, I like play carries. Chest rigs are pretty cool. This one is not a bad choice, and it is one I do have some experience with. So it is an easy recommend if you don't know where to start. Or if you're doing your, I'm guessing lots of people do all their crazy cosplays. So very simple, very efficient. I mean, it really does everything you need it to. It just sucks when you're enlisted because it's all just change of command ceremonies. And it's literally, you'll never do anything cool with it. Like, oh, can I wear it on the range? No, I'll only play carriers and uh, ballistic helmets. And you're like, well, what can I do with it? And they're like, ah, another change of command ceremony's coming up. And that's the best part? When you throw those two canteens on the back, you don't even drink the water. Usually your canteens aren't even clean. Some people don't even have water in there. They got uh, other stuff. But yeah, you like never drink the water. And you're out in a, like, was it 38 Celsius day, 100% humidity. So yeah, if you're not dropping out from locking your knees, you're dropping out from heat exhaustion. And they like to stand there for hours on end, so. But you can do pretty cool things otherwise. You can do cool things otherwise. So if you've got... this, Honestly, this guy's like one of the main reasons I still have so many Molly magazine pouches and all sorts of gear. Because it's nice to have. It's a very simple, cost-effective system. So, um, I'm not really trying to like sell you guys on it or anything. I mean, it's like, like I said, $12. If you need somewhere to start, you only got 20 bucks. Not a bad, not a bad choice. So, easy recommend for me. Probably the cheapest and most efficient way to uh, start getting into gear, honestly. And then if you, if you get better gear, this guy will never not be useful. If somehow you end up going to like Vegas or something, they're letting you go absolutely ham with a saw, then you get the saw mag pouches that are super easy to install. And this thing also weighs close to nothing. So, something always good to have keep on you, keep around you, just keep in general. And like I said, they're cheap. I don't know, I think they're using the, um, yeah, that's the other thing. So it's been a minute since I've been out. I still like the LBT one, but I think now all the cool kids are using, I think it was developmental when I was like around the time I got out. All the cool kids are using the guy we're going to be talking about in the next video, which is this. Oh yes, this. We'll be talking about that later though. So Cheers, everyone. Stay chivalrous, and I will catch you in the next video. And once again, in 4K and uh, 5.1, 5.1 surround sound, allegedly, the good sir night. Stay chivalrous, everyone. Peace out.